Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making Sally the Squirrel. Thanks to Nutjob2 Nutty by Nature for sponsoring this video. We're in the middle of school holidays here and I just had a few weeks off myself. I didn't have filming or anything for a few weeks which is the first time in six and a half years which is a bit crazy. We've done lots of fun stuff including taking Jed to the zoo and I took him to see Nutjob2 which was lots of fun. Cute little guy. Boop. <laughs> Don't call me cute! Oh, got it! To make Surly the Squirrel, first we need to make some peanut butter cake. And for that you need margarine, sugar, sour cream, eggs, baking powder, flour, vanilla, milk, brown sugar, peanut butter and oil. Add the baking powder in with the flour and whisk those together until they're well combined, there are no lumps and the flour is aerated. Then add the sour cream to the milk and whisk those together too. Now if you're new around here, all the recipe quantities for this are on the howtocookthat.net website and it's there for you in grams and ounces and cups and there's a link to that below in the description. Add the white sugar and the brown sugar into the bowl with the butter and then whisk them together until the mixture changes from looking a bit like wet sand to looking pale and fluffy like this. Add in the peanut butter, the oil, vanilla and the eggs and mix that on high speed until it's smooth. That's looking yummy already. Now all we need to do is add in the flour and the milk and you can add that in in batches a third at a time but don't be too slow about it because you don't want to over mix it once you've added the flour. Split that mixture evenly between two lined baking trays and spread it out all the way to the edges. Then bake those in the oven for around 25 minutes. Then we also need to bake two trays of my rich chocolate cake and the recipe and the video explaining how to make that is on the website too. Once your cakes are baked and cooled, we need to make some frosting. I'm gonna use some peanut butter frosting and some vanilla butter cream. Making the frosting is easy, you just put all the ingredients in the bowl and mix it for a few minutes together until it's light and fluffy. Print and cut out your template so that you know the size of everything and how big your layers of cake need to be. And this template is on the How to Cook That website too for you. Cut around each of the cake layer templates just using a serrated knife. And once you've cut those all out, it's time to stack the cake. Put a little frosting onto the cake board to stop it slipping. And then put layer one into place on the board. Brush that cake with some simple syrup. This just keeps the cake moist and how to make it is just equal parts of sugar and water. Just heat it up in the microwave until the sugar is dissolved. Spread on the first layer of frosting and if you like you can even sprinkle on some nuts to make it even more nutty. Add layer two, I'm using peanut butter cake for the second layer and then add some simple syrup and then some peanut butter frosting and of course some nuts. And after you've done that with layer three, look at where your cake board will sit and mark out one, two, three, four spots for supports. Poke one cake pop stick into the cake and then mark where the cake comes up to and pull it out again. Cut the stick at that level and then cut three more so that you have four sticks exactly the same length. Poke each of those into the cake in the spot that you marked and then add the cake board on top. And now see when I push down, the weight of the layers on top of this won't be able to squash the cake at the bottom, so it will keep its shape. Now stack up layers four through to eight on top of that. Look at that beautiful stack of cake. Put the side template in front of it and make sure that this tallest bit for his nose is in line with the top layer of cake. So layer eight needs to be over one side slightly so that it's in the right place. Now using a serrated knife, cut along the edge of the template to get the right shape. And remember to cut out the mouth section too. Now turn your cake 90 degrees so you're looking at the top of the head and cut around the top shape template. Say hi to Jetty there, he's just checking in on the cake progress. <laughs> All right, so now we have the mouth here. 
the nose here and now we need to carve this top shape out of the cake. So put this template over the top and carve off just tiny bits to form the shape of his face. Now you need to carve the top of his nose a little bit skinnier, just like you can see in the picture. And make his mouth come up a little bit on the edges too to make him smile. Cover the whole outside of your cake in buttercream and then roll out a nice big piece of purple fondant and then carefully lift it up on your arms and place it over the top of the head. Now the chin is going to be white so I'm more focusing on the top and the sides of the head and not worrying about the bit that's right in front of me. Lift and lower that fondant to get rid of any ruffles and then use the palms of your hands just to press it into the shape of the cake. Now I know this cake looks really tall and that's because the squirrel's ears sit so far back on their head you kind of need it to be tall to get everything in the right place. Use your thumbs to gently mark where that mouth is and then take some scissors and cut off the extra fondant that's under the chin because we're going to cover that area in white in a minute. It looks a bit like a purple dinosaur at the moment. <laughs> Trim off all around the base, leaving a little more than you think you need. And then you can just tuck that under so that it looks nice and neat. Now cut a slit where the mouth is and push that fondant down flat. While the fondant is still soft, take a skewer or a toothpick and make lines in the direction that his fur goes down his nose and around his cheeks, just little lines there to give it a bit of texture. Fold a piece of black fondant in half and add it into the slot for his mouth and then open it up again. Now I sprayed my black fondant with vegetable cooking oil before folding it and that's what stopped it from sticking together. If you don't spray it, you're not gonna be able to open it up again. Cut along the top edge of where the mouth is so that you have black just inside the mouth. Now cut some fondant in the shape of your teeth. I'm making them a bit longer so that I can poke them into the gum and I'll add the exact shape that I made them to the template for you. And you want to leave those teeth to one side to dry out a bit. Using the template, cut out the white section of his face, but instead of cutting around the base of it, let it go down so you've got a strip for his neck. Mark where the top of his nose sits and dampen that area with a little bit of water. And then add the piece of white fondant over the top and down the front of the cake. Now straight away while that white fondant is still soft, use your skewer to drag down the edge of the fondant so that it isn't a flat sort of hard line going from white to purple, but instead it looks a bit more like a different coloured fur blending in. And do some more lines all the way under the chin and in the direction of the fur on all the white areas. Put some water along the lower lip there and then add a strip of deep pink along that lip line just for his bottom lip. Add your teeth into place making sure you put the bottom teeth in before the top ones because the top ones will sit in front of them. Cut the nose out of black fondant then dampen the top of the nose area and add it into place. Once it's there just use your fingers to push it to make sure it isn't stretched out of shape just make it symmetrical and make sure it's sitting straight in the middle there. Cut out the lighter eye area and gently press that on the side there. Just like we did with the white piece, you want to use a skewer again to give a fur texture all the way around the eye and sort of make that blend in a bit there. Add the white of the eye and then because he is a cartoon character, roll a thin snake of black and wrap it around the eye. Brush on a tiny bit of water and then put a thin snake of pink. I'm not sure why, but that just sits around the top of his eye. I can see that in the pictures, so that's what we're doing. Roll out some light brown and cut out two circles for the coloured part of the eye. And then make a mini ball of black and squash it right in the centre of the eye for the pupil. Then using some dark brown food colouring, paint some on one side going from the centre of the eye to the edge. 
Then use some water on your brush to water it down and keep going around the eye until you've covered about three quarters of it. I was teaching Matthew how to draw eyes this week and one of the things that if you don't get it right the eye won't look good is that you have to have exact circles. So if you haven't got that black pupil exactly right, if it's not right in the center or if it's not a circle it's not going to look right. So just do it again before you start painting it and get the shape right first. Once you get to the last quarter of the eye, just do the edge and not the center. So you've got a bit of a lighter highlight in the eye there. And now add an even tinier ball of white for the reflection in his eye. Because if you look at someone's eyeball, if there's a light on in the room, you'll see that reflecting. Cut a little bit off the bottom edge and then add that into place. Ah! Just a lovable little dolly. Okay, that's a little creepy. <laughs> Roll some pointy snakes and attach a few of them onto the cheeks just so that you've got a few hairs that are sort of sticking out and then that gives your eye just sort of the perception that the whole thing is that sort of texture. Mix some black fondant with a little bit of water to make a paste and then use that to add some black eyebrows. If you also roll some little pointy snakes of black and purple and just curve some of them, leave some of them straight and leave them to dry at this point, we can add them in later to make it look a bit more 3D. But having this black underneath will make it look a bit fuller. Use some purple food grade dusting powder to shade the top part of the eye area. And you can also use some gray to define the chin and neck area a little bit too, if you want to. And use a little bit of gray on the nose, just to highlight it on one side. Careful that you don't make him sneeze. And add a line of white food coloring to his lip for the highlight. And then just put some clean water on your brush and brush it across the white line just to soften it and do it in the direction that the lines on your lips go. Poke a hole into the top of the head and add some of the dried pointy snakes of fondant. They dry out really quickly because they're so little. Okay, on to the ears. This is the bit I've been dreading. Don't tell me you're scared. Cut them out of purple fondant and then you want to cut a smaller version of the same shape out of pink and add it on top. Use your knife to roughen the edges so it looks like fur and then add the ears using a little bit of water and then to keep them in the shape you want them, put some baking paper underneath and some foil scrunched up to hold them where you want them. Poke some more holes around the eyebrows and add your black pointy snakes. Now see how that black underneath makes it look more full and the ones we're adding now make it look more 3D. A few hours later, you can remove the supports from under the ears and Surly the Squirrel is ready. Yes! And now it's time to cut the cake. <gasps> That's not good. Lots of people ask me how to cut cakes that have support boards in them. All you need to do is cut down until you feel the board and then stop and then cut down again and then just put your knife in just above the board and take your piece of yummy chocolate peanut butter cake out. So you'd cut all of that top layer down to the board then remove the board and your cake pop supports and slice the bottom half of your cake. Thanks again to Nutjob2 Nutty by Nature for sponsoring this video. Click here for the trailer, here for more 3D cakes, here for my chocolate creations and here to go to my channel. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.